Images They are not simply set of objects. Each image represents a web of interconnected relationships. This is a powerful first line taken from an abstract from a recent research paper by Fei-Fei Li's research group titled Referring Relationships. This is published in CBPI 2018. So in this video, we'll be reviewing this paper. To understand this paper, you need to get the basics of web ontology language, RDF. It is a set of standards for communicating information about relationships to the machine, which is in terms of triplet, subject, object, predicate. In this paper, the example is person is kicking the ball. Now here the person is the subject, kicking is the predicate, and the ball is the object. FYI, double meaning is intentional here. And at the same time, the goalkeeper is protecting the goal. He also belongs to the same category, which is person. So this paper discusses about a novel method to disambiguate or differentiate these two people even more. So this means if the input to my model is a triplet called person, comma, kicking, comma, ball, plus the image, then the output should be the localization or bounding box around the person who is kicking the ball and not the person who is protecting or goalkeeping. Similarly, in the case of person guarding goal, it should create the bounding box around the other person. In section 2, the author tells how previous attempts to model the visual relationships involving processing NLP and images made it very difficult to disambiguate mistakes. I mean, where's the error? Is it coming from poor language modeling or is it coming from visual understanding or where is it coming? Attention modeling has been an icebreaker for a lot of tough modeling problems like image captioning and question answering. In fact, my own research work at IISC focused on visual attention. The paper tries to model attention shifting in two ways, predicate and inverse predicate. A treated B, B is cured by A. Here treated and cured are predicate and its inverse predicate. Now Ranjay et al. tries to use predicate as attention shifting operation which is super awesome. It is like addition subtraction. If you can add predicate attention model to a subject then you will get an object. Like if you add carrying to a person you get mobile. If you are adding carried by to a mobile which is an inverse operation you get the person back. Brilliant isn't it? Now you have heard about receptive field right? then you definitely know that each pixel in feature map represents a region in the original image. We represent each region by two random variables, x and y. So this x and y are corresponding to each point. x greater than threshold means it belongs to the subject. y greater than the threshold means it belongs to the object. Now the graph is defined as follow. The nodes here are the regions corresponding to each point in feature map and the edges are linking all the subjects and the object regions. So the task is to assign the correct random variables to the point in the feature maps such that the conditional probability of X being the part of the subject and Y being part of the object regions given the predicate and the image is maximized. Now let's jump onto the approach. Take the initial feature map obtained from the last activation layer of CON4 in ResNet50 this is 14 cross 14 cross 5 and 2. Now for each point in spatial domain, we have a corresponding region, right? Let's say I obtain a 1 cross 5 and 2 representation for a person object. Then I do a dot product of this vector with this 14 cross 14 cross 5 and 2 feature representation. I will straight away obtain a primary attention map for the person entity. Similarly for the ball. This is the starting point for this approach. No predicate, simply finding the attention based on the entity. Now I refine this map based on the predicate in the following way. This is very similar to message passing methods such as CRFs. But before all that, I got to learn predicate shift and inverse predicate shift operations. This is a cascade of n convolutions. Now once I have learned this, I have all that's required to have this message passing magic. I start with an entity map for subject and object. Then I use this predicate shift operator to find out the attention of my object given the subject's attention map and vice versa. Now I multiply this new subject attention obtained from the object with my original feature map from the entity. And that's how the message passing takes place. 
That's how the predicate based shift operations help in updating the initial attention. We keep cascading this again and again to improve our localization. Predicate shift in itself can be an amazing thing to observe. Let's see the input attention is caution at the center as shown in the screen. Then after applying left predicate, it goes to right, which may seem confusing, but it is not. A is left of B, which means B is actually on the right side of A. For example, right shifts the attention below the subject, which is quite intuitive. Let's say triplet is person is left to the person. Then the attention after two iterations looks like this. Looks so cool, right? To put an icing on the cake, the paper talks about extending the work to attention saccades, which draws inspiration from motion of human eye fixation. This paper on attention saccades by Toralba's lab is also quite an interesting read. This current approach of referring relationships can also be a quite a good way to traverse in a scene draft by cascading the attention shift module with different relations and passing the entire scene graph as an input. So please let us know which papers you want me to review next time. Till then, adios amigos. See you next time. So if you like the videos then do subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss an update from Crazy Muse.